is risen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our anthem.
your feet to do all the things to love people. So I have something really fun. I have, get it, sunglasses. Because the Son of God is out and about in you, and the sun is bright, and it's shining, and it means that you are loved forever and ever and ever and ever. Not just because you're beautiful and you're smart and you're cute and you do all these things. You know why God loves you? Because you were created just like God. It says in God's image, just like God. So I'm going to give you sunglasses. Hey, Mama, back there, can I give you sunglasses? <laughs> and you can wear your sunglasses today, and you can wear them every day as a sign that the Son of God is out and bright, and you are always loved. Would you like to pick some there? And we're going to hand them out, and then we're going to stand up and say a prayer. Oh, man, you guys look pretty spiffy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I'm going to tell you, when I'm driving today, I'm going to put my sunglasses on, my shades, and I'm going to be thinking of all you cool kids. Right? Yes, it is so much fun, so much fun to be part of a church, so much fun to remember how much God loves us. So when you get your sunglasses, how about standing up? wanted to share yesterday we went to Spring Arbor and celebrated Roy Shiflett's 85th birthday. Um, several members of the church were there. We had cupcakes. Um, Roy was really surprised and really happy. Um, if anybody still wants to send cards, I'm sure he'd love to get the mail. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, 
Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is one of Paul's letters to Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. 
There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Okay, folks, it is really just that simple. All the preparations, the strategizing, the organizing, the work, the energy, the planning, yes, all of the planning. Frankly, it started the day after Christmas. I do believe we started, or maybe it was the day after New Year's. Yes, it was January. We entered Lent in February, and we silenced the Alleluias. And then for 40 days, we focused on looking deep inward in our own sinful nature. And today, today is Easter Sunday, and we are finally here. The story of all stories is told. The Alleluias are out of the bag, metaphorically, and the choir and the singers and the bells and the trumpets and everybody is set loose. We see the sun and the world is alive again. Oh, the excitement for this day is finally here. But what do we read in our text for this Sunday? The Marys and their friends went to anoint the body, but they get there and the stone has been rolled away and the tomb is empty good job jesus is gone no fanfare no marching band of angels there is not even a ta-da not even that all we read the tomb is empty in fact it reads that the women were so freaked out and afraid that they couldn't say anything they were silent. The tomb is empty. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but sometimes it feels a little like I'm living in an empty tomb. If you still pay attention to TV or media and world events, we're praying for the people of Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, Ethiopia, and even the lost souls that went down on the key bridge. We continue to keep close to us. And on and on and on it continues. Is the economy doing well? Are we financially doing okay? How is our relationship with those we love? Do we feel distant and sometimes struggle to find out where we are in the world? Are times changing so fast that we need a NASCAR race car to keep up with the chores and obligations and responsibilities we seem to have each and every single day? Frankly, do you feel like a winner because you're sitting in this room this morning at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock? I know. Are we loving our neighbors as we should? It can all feel like an avalanche of responsibility and obligation and expectation in a world that can't seem to figure out what is truth. Is your tomb empty? Hallelujah! See, I believe Mary, Mary and Salome, they knew something of unmet expectations. They were planning on going to the tomb to see and touch and experience loss, a painful separation, an ending, a finality, frankly, death. They were still hearing the ringing in their ears on Good Friday. It is finished. But now they don't even have a body to grieve over because the tomb is empty. They leave so caught up in their sadness that they cannot even speak. Their hopes and their dreams are now as bare 
and vacant and hollow as an unoccupied hole left exposed. Their tomb was empty. Alleluia. So why sing Alleluia, folks? Why bring out the flowers and the trumpet, the choirs and the bells and the fancy vestments? Why celebrate an empty tomb? This, my friend, is exactly why we celebrate the empty tomb. Because it is our freedom, it is our forgiveness, it is our salvation, our gift of life for all eternity. It is our hope and it is our expectation. It is what we hold dear day after day. It is certainly nothing that you and I have done or can earn. It's a gift, just like we share in those fancy baskets, you know, with the chocolate bunnies inside. We don't need to fundraise or earn or barter our way. You can't find a billboard. You can't find a commercial. You can't take a vacation for it. You can't email it or text it or read Reddit or it's not even on Instagram. It's not the way of the world, folks. And it is set up, and it can be hard for us to believe. And what is our response to the empty tomb? Here is what we are to do. We go and we share the alleluias with everyone that we know. It is as simple as what I told the kids. We look to the sun full on for our love and our hope and our joy. We take what we know, what we have been taught, what we have experienced, and we go out those doors into the community and the neighborhoods, into our own homes and out into the world, and we follow our Savior. We are indeed the hands and the feet, the hands and the heart of a gracious God. And now we need to go, and as scripture says, go and tell, and there you will see him, just as he told you. And yes, folks, the tomb is empty. Alleluia. And with an empty tomb comes a release, a release from our past, our old ways, into a life filled with forgiveness and grace, where we are loved not for the color of our skin, not for our sexual orientation, not for our wealth or lack of it, not for our status or our job or our beautiful faces or our position of power. We are loved because we have a God who is so desperately wanting a relationship with you and with me that even with our own, he would, God would put his own child on that cross for us, you and me. So we sing Alleluia for that love is given to us today so that all things that weigh us down may be taken and left at the foot of the cross so that we may be a people of unending joy. We struggle so many times to understand that this message is truly just that simple. That because God so loved the world, God would, through the healing power of Jesus' resurrection, would save us from ourselves and from one another. The tomb is empty. Alleluia. And this good news cannot wait to be shared. It is urgent. And it is needed today that God is merciful. The debt has been paid and death does not have the last word. God, God has the last word. And it is truly that simple, folks. Love for you and love for me. We can be snazzing it all up. We can build cathedrals. We can make beautiful churches. We can add flowers and icons and pretty pictures. 
We can sing like the angels, but take away for today what is truly simple. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive, and we are free of all the things that convict, hurt, break us, and hold us back. And it started with an empty tomb and with the word go. Go, friends. Go and tell what you know, what you have heard, what you have experienced. Because you are loved just as you were created in the beautiful image of God. And for that, we say, thanks be to God. The tomb is empty. Alleluia and amen. Our hymn that we will sing next is Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Stand as you are able to join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations. Free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith, Gloria Day, and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Now, may we share the peace and the joy of Easter with those around us. Thank you. 
risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world, through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And let us pray as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just a few brief instructions. We here at Gloria Day celebrate an open table. For indeed, it is not my table. It is not even Gloria Day's table. It is God's table. And God invites all to come. Please know that you will come forward through the center with the ushers helping you. The first person in front of you will have bread. The next person will have the chalice, the cup of wine. You'll pour, uh, they will pour it into your cup. Or the next one out will have grape juice, also the same. They can pour that in your cup. If you have gluten concerns, we have gluten-free wafers. Please just indicate that to us, and we will get that for you. If you would like to come up for a blessing, you are more than welcome. Just come on up and put your hands up so we know to give you that blessing. Please be seated, and at this time, I invite the ushers to come forward.
please stand as you are able. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. I would just like to take a quick moment to thank everybody who helped put our Easter services together. There are so many wonderful people that I don't even begin to want to name names. If you also are looking for a church, please know that Gloria Day is here and would love to have you, would love to talk about it. Uh, this is a church that's active and vibrant and alive in the world and a place where you will be welcomed for exactly who you are. And now for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face to shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending hymn, Thine is the Glory. Thank you.